Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I have my December wrap up. So basically, I'm gonna go through all of the books that are in December, chat about my ratings, my thoughts and feelings about them all. December for me was actually a really good reading month. I'm not sure why, but it was. I think it's just when I get in a wintry, Christmassy mood, all I want to do is curl up with a good book. So that is what I did for the majority of December. So I ended up reading 11 books altogether and two, no, three of those were five star books. So. It was a good month for me. It was a good way to end the hell that was 2020. And it was a good, also a good way to get me motivated to start the new year and stay in a big reading mood, which I have been doing so far. But yeah, I'm just gonna get into all the books that I read in December and chat a little bit about them. But before I do that, if you could please hit this video with a like, that would be hugely appreciated because it really supports my channel. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more bookish content from me. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. So the first three books that I read in December were actually all part of a series and I don't have any of them physically to hold right now because I actually borrowed them from a friend but those were the second, third and fourth books in the After series by Anna Todd. So we had After We Collided, After We Fell and After Ever After. No, After Ever Happy, After Ever After, I don't know where I got that from. After Ever Happy. And I can't find my phone that has my ratings on it. So the After series basically focuses on two main characters of Hardin and Tessa. At the beginning of the first novel, Tessa lives at home. She's just finished high school. She is moving to university as this perfect girl with perfect grades, dresses very reserved, has the perfect high school boyfriend, all of that jazz. And then she moves to university and she meets Hardin, the resident bad boy and player. And not really a spoiler, she falls in love with him. Things happen and yeah. The first thing to mention is that in no way are these books a good example of a healthy relationship. They are extremely problematic. They detail the most toxic relationship I've ever read about in my life and I would never Never ever want anyone to read it, particularly a young person who's very impressionable and still finding out about love and relationships etc. I would never want them to read it and think that this is a good example of love. It is awful the way they treat each other, the insecurities, the jealousy, the gaslighting. It is bad. It is everything a relationship should not be basically. However, there is no denying that these books are entertaining. If you can see that, if you know what a healthy relationship is and you can read that for knowing how toxic it is, I think it's okay, I can do that. I know what a healthy relationship is. I've been through the bad ones, now I've got a good one. So I can sort of compartmentalize and read it just for entertainment value. And for entertainment value, it's pretty good. It's smutty, it's steamy, it has some twists and turns. It's an absolute page turner, the whole series. So the second, third and fourth books, I read them all within a matter of days. I just raced through them. They were just like the biggest form of escapism, just going into someone else's problems and forgetting all about my own for a bit. And yeah, so for entertainment value only, I gave every book in the series three stars. I was never gonna go above that because obviously, I mean, the writing's not great. The relationships are awful. There are some other problematic things in there like slut shaming, which I'm not okay with at all. Um, but it wasn't really, it didn't feel like it was really challenged at all. It was as if she thought it was okay. I don't know. But basically, yeah, for entertainment value only, <laughs> I gave them three out of five stars. I will not reread them, but they were ones that I just wanted to read because I wanted to have that experience because obviously they are very widely talked about having started off as a Harry Styles fanfic. So Hardin, the bad boy, he's English. He is supposed to be like a bad boy alternative to Harry Styles. And then there are other male characters in there that represent the other boys in the band. But yeah. Moving on. The next books I read are another series. This is going to be quite a short wrap up because everything I'm talking about is like in a series rather than like one, one, one. So yeah, I might have read 11 books, but they're all in like series. So anyway, the next books I read, I actually have a 24 hour reading vlog and a weekly reading vlog for because I did a 24 hour reading vlog in which I tried to read as many of the selection series by Kira Cass as I could in 24 hours. I managed to read three which meant the other two were left over onto the weekly reading vlog I did after that. So I have already done vlogs about my thoughts of all of these but again I gave all of these three stars I think. Let me check. Yeah I gave all the books in the series three stars again for entertainment value. The books basically follow well the first three basically follow America Singer. This book the books are set in the future I believe. So I don't think it's really ever said what 
year they're set in but they're like dystopian novels but they're very sort of like backward in the way that they think in this society. So basically there's this competition called The Selection where letters are posted out to all of the young women between I want to say like 16 and 20, something like that, throughout the country and they can then fit in fill in an application form to take part in the selection which is where 35 young women go to the palace to compete for the prince's heart and they do that through like tasks and things to show that they would be a good princess and also through their one-on-one -on -one conversations with the prince to try and start a connection with him but there are also a lot of other sort of themes in this because it's a dystopian obviously there are people rebelling against the system so you've got this whole idea with like a lot of dystopians I think with America you learn with her how corrupt this world is as we go on and all of the problems it faces and her feelings about that and also the prince's feelings about that. So the first three I really enjoyed for that. I love a good dystopian and I really liked how that was all explored. For some reason I just didn't think they were above a three stars though. Like they didn't give me the four or five star feels but I did really really enjoy them. I loved the relationship between America and the prince and also a lot of the other side characters and like their background where they came from, how they interact with other people. I loved a lot of the points that they made about gender and class obviously and and yeah, I just love a good dystopian. The next two in the series, however, again, I gave her three stars for entertainment value, but these two follow the daughter of the prince and the one he selects. So it's like 20 years later or something, I think. And it's about Aidlin, their daughter and her own selection. So to me, it didn't feel like these were one complete series. It kind of felt like the first three were like a trilogy and these two were sort of a spin-off series I guess. For me it didn't flow as one whole series so that like got my back up immediately. <laughs> These ones I did enjoy as well. Again like I said I gave them a three out of five stars. I talked about in my reading vlogs how at the beginning of these novels the main character is really annoying, really irritating and I thought I was going to hate these books because I didn't think I'd be able to like get on board with her because I don't like reading from the perspective of someone who I really really hate. Unless some some thrillers and that they work for for this it wasn't because she was she thought she was good and she was supposed to be good and likeable and she was like really annoying and it also a lot of this I didn't think was very realistic based on the first three like how things had moved on and her character I didn't think was realistic based on the people that brought her up. You can see more of my thoughts in the two blogs I will link them above and down below but yes again for overall entertainment value I did give these three out of five stars. I did race through all of these in a matter of days I think I read all five of them in like two or three days so they were they were definitely entertaining they were definitely page turners and they were exactly what I wanted I wanted to just race through like very easy exciting fun novels and that's exactly what I got. Okay the next two books I have again I have a 24 hour reading vlog for these because apparently I'm obsessed with 24 hour reading vlogs but I did a Christmassy 24 hour reading vlog in which I read The Christmas Horus and The Christmas Horus and The Winter Witch both by Tom Fletcher. These are middle grade novels that follow a little boy called William Trundle who due to an accident when he was younger is left in a wheelchair and at the beginning of the novel he feels very isolated and very alone. He doesn't really have any friends apart from his dad who is obsessed with Christmas. And then across the North Pole we have an egg that was left during the dinosaur period. <laughs> iced over during the ice age and then it is found by elves while they are mining for toys and out of it hatches the Christmas Saurus who also feels isolated and alone because he is the only one of his kind around and then through a series of events the two meet and <sighs> the relationship between these two is honestly the most adorable thing I've ever read. I loved it so much. I love the writing style of these. I said in my reading vlog as well. The writing style of these is just like so whimsical and charming. It reminded me very much of the BFG, like some of the words that are used in here, like people doing snozzle trumps and things like that. It was just so fun and heartwarming and it was the, these were the perfect books to read for Christmas. It was just... <sighs> I was in such a Christmas mood after reading these and I have just found out thanks to Rachel that Tom Fletcher is actually working on the third book in this series so hopefully we'll have a third one to read either next Christmas or the Christmas after and I cannot tell you how excited I am because these books are everything. They are the cutest things I've ever read in my entire life. They also, as middle grades, do touch on important issues that children need to learn about like friendship, identity, that it's okay to not conform, things like that, but they're done in very good ways and yes, I just love these books and I will definitely be reading rereading them probably every Christmas to come. And the final book that I read in... Did I actually, did I say? I don't know if I said, I gave them five stars. Did I say that? I don't know, but I gave them both five out of five stars because they were 
amazing and I love them. But the final book that I read in December was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. If you don't know, I'm currently co-hosting a read-along of all three of these books in the trilogy with Maddie, Spoops, Ro and Katie. I will link all their channels down below as well as the information for the Dostabalong or Daughter of Smoke and Bone read-along. We have currently done live shows for the first one and the second one but unfortunately because I was really ill for the first one I couldn't take part and I didn't manage to read the book either. So at the end of December I quickly read the first one. I also started the second one by I didn't finish it until the first couple of days of January so I'm not going to talk about that right now but yes both of the live shows for the first two books are already on Maddie's channel if you do want to watch them we basically just discuss the books and how much we love them but this was my first Lainey Taylor book that I have ever read and I understand the obsession. Lainey Taylor's writing is everything it is so magical it's so it's like descriptive and beautiful but at the same time it's not too descriptive a lot of books I read where the author is quite a descriptive writer I struggle with because I find myself wanting to like skip paragraphs because it's just too much description and I get bored and I want some dialogue or something to happen but Lady Taylor just does it just right and her descriptions are insane her imagery that she uses is just it blows my mind. I don't know how it comes from her imagination. But these books basically are kind of like an angels and demons fantasy but done very differently to anything I've ever read before. They follow the main character of Karu with the lovely blue hair. She starts off living in Prague as a young artist and she has a secret life where she works for a chimera called Brimstone and she goes and collects teeth for him or she... Yeah, she goes and collects teeth from him for people who are selling them, but she doesn't know what he does with the teeth or what that's all about. And believe me, I spent three quarters of this book wanting to know what is with the teeth. But eventually you find out and it's quite interesting. And then you also have Akiva, who is a young, beautiful, haunted angel who is on the other side of a war between angels and demons or angel and chimera. And he sees Karu and becomes fixated on her and feels some sort of connection and pull to her. And the story develops. I'm really bad at explaining things guys but that kind of gives you a little overall basis of what the books are about and oh, I love this book so much. Like the whole world is just so different to anything I've ever read before and I thought the world building was done so well. Everything was built up at a nice pace and it was all explained very well so that I was able to understand it because just getting back into fantasy right now it is sometimes difficult if you're not used to world building and you're not used to different storylines and things. There are a couple of different timelines in this which did get a bit confusing at times but again I don't think that's anything to do with Lainey Taylor's writing. I think that's just me getting back into fantasy and getting back into grips with how it works. Karu I absolutely love. Her best friend Susanna is the best thing ever. There's so many lovable characters in this and the love story between Karu and Akiva is just... The books are also very dark as well but again done really well. I like how dark they are and it's all a bit sinister and it's all a bit creepy but all very well explained. And yeah I just loved it so much and I'm 100% Elaine Taylor convert. I can't wait to finish the series and move on to all of her other novels as well. So that is it for my December wrap up. My 11 books that I read in the month of December. Like I said it was a really good reading month. I had three five star reads and the rest were three stars so that's really not too shabby at all. But that will conclude this video so if you did enjoy this video as always too please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe for more content from me, comment down below with any of your thoughts and feelings and I will see you in my next one.